Hello, today I'm going to be talking about social contract theory. Our objectives today are to understand how institutions are created, to identify the differences between governments, and to explain the three main social contract theories. First, we have to understand two concepts in Latin, Pactum Unionis, which basically means that a society uh, is basically comprised of people who want to respect each other and respect their rights, and so they're going to be coming together to create a union and live in peace and harmony. The other concept is going to be Pactum Subjectionis, when a society uh, unite and pledge to obey a single authority, uh, this, they basically surrender their rights and their freedom in order to get protection from the, such authority. The first social contract theory uh, that we're going to be talking about is uh, the one by Thomas Hobbes. He wrote the Leviathan. The Leviathan is basically this symbol for um, that authority figure under Pactum Subjectionis, who's going to be taking over the rights and freedom of people in order to protect them. In terms of uh, Hobbes social contract theory, where we need to talk about the state of nature. Uh, when we begin with state of nature, man is going to live in a state of fear and selfishness. There's going to be chaos. People are going to be fighting each other. People are going to be stealing from each other. And so they're going to be forming a social contract because they want self-protection and self-preservation. And so they're going to be voluntarily surrendering their rights to uh, an authority figure so that we create a system of government. Uh, the institution that is created is going to be uh, the mightiest, mightiest authority, which is going to be uh, assuming absolute power. Uh, Thomas Hobbes is uh, an absolutist, and their role is to ensure that life and property is preserved. Again, the Leviathan, as we can see, this is a picture that uh, Thomas Hobbes used. Uh, it's a metaphor for the state. It's described as an artificial person whose body is made up of all the bodies of the citizens. We can see that in this image how it's made up of all the citizens of a given uh, group. Uh, the head of the Leviathan is the sovereign, and the Leviathan is constructed through contract by people in the state of nature, and they need that, the power of the Leviathan to protect each other. A uh, quote by Thomas Hobbes is, Might is always right. The second social contract theory that we're going to be talking about is uh, John Locke's uh, Treaties of Two Governments. Uh, John Locke basically established that we needed uh, those basic rights in order to be able to create a union. So uh, Thomas Hobbes, is, uh, sorry, John Locke is going to be following what we call Pactum Unionis. The state of nature is peace, goodwill, mutual assistance, and preservation. Man has natural rights. Uh, he basically, uh, the fundamental rights are going to be life, liberty, and property. People are free but their morality actually makes them treat each other nicely. In terms of the social contract, people are, do not surrender all their rights to a single individual, but they surrender a specific amount of freedom and rights in order to create that union and to preserve each other's rights, in order for the law of nature to take order over that group of people. For the institution that is formed, the purpose of the government and the law is to uphold and protect natural rights, uh, when it ceases to fulfill it, the laws basically allow the government, sorry, allow the people to create a new form of government. Again, those lock-in rights are going to be life, liberty, and property, and they influence the Declaration of Independence of the United States and later on other declarations as well. Property is a key concept here because private, private property is uh, created when a person mixes his labor with raw materials of nature. I mean, again, if you're going to be planting a seed and actually taking care of that seed so it grows into a full-on vegetable, then that's your vegetable and you want that to be true. However, uh, under the state of nature, people could take uh, each other's property. And so what Locke proposes is that we need a system where each other's property is protected, not by uh by your own force but rather by coming together and forming an institution the third and and final social contract theory is from jean jacques rousseau uh he writes a social contract and we're going to be talking about the concept of the general will 
In, in terms of uh, Rousseau's social contract theory, the state of nature is a life that um, is happy and there's equality among men. It's very similar to John's, John Locke's state of nature. Uh, but the invention of private property made people fall into greed and there's competition and there's going to be vice and people are, are going to be starting to envy each other in order to, um, in, in order to actually create that society. And so because of that envy and because of that kind of struggle between being equal and being happy and actually getting what you want, people are going to be coming together again under Pactum Unionis to create the general will. And the general will proposes that uh, there's going to be a majority of citizens that are going to be making the, the decisions for the whole and blind, blind obedience needs to be following that general will. It's kind of like a constitution. But it's basically an agreement between people to actually follow that. Uh, we can see the general will being implemented in uh, an institution today, uh, such as gender, where everybody just blindly um, follows what the gender constructs are. Unless we follow what gender is uh, contemporarily, when we have more genders and, and transgender individuals coming into play with this uh, social institution. So the institution that Rousseau's social contract theory forms is going to be a state that guarantees rights, liberties, and freedom. And uh, it's mostly uh, focused on the modern state, as we call it in AP Comparative Government. Uh, a quote from Rousseau is that man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. This means that basically within the social contract, people are going to have to lose some freedom in order to gain that freedom of being part of that social contract and the freedom to, to maintain their property and to maintain their happiness as well. So a quick summary, uh, the state of nature for Hobbes is going to be chaotic, the state of nature for Locke is going to be harmonious, and the state of nature for Rousseau is going to be harmonious, but because of envy and basically capitalism, there's going to be chaos. In terms of the social contract for Hobbes, we need to ensure absolute rule. For Locke, we need to ensure natural or Lockean rights. And to, for Rousseau, we need to bring back basic rights. In terms of the institution, for Hobbes, it's an authoritarian institution with absolute power. For Locke, we have a rule of law to protect rights. And for Rousseau, it's majority rules. A combination of Locke and Rousseau's social contract theory is the basis for a democracy. In terms of the pactum that we have, for Hobbes it's going to be subjectionis, for Locke it's going to be unionis, and for Rousseau it's going to be a little bit of both because the majority is going to be kind of authoritarian uh, to uh, the rest of the population. So again, this is a major flaw in democracy as well. Thank you so much for listening.